Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Muschak, and today we are here with another main association of athletes problem from November 2010. Uh, round 4, problem rules. Problem number 3. Find the product of the greatest and least roots of this problem rule. So how do we... how do we do this? We find all of the roots. And this is a high school math competition. It's not going to be like... How do I explain? Like, they wouldn't do this. If you couldn't find the roots using pre-calc methods. So we're just going to use our pre-calc methods. So we're going to use the rational roots theorem. Um, the roots have to be a factor of 180. Divided by a factor of 1. Uh, a factor of 1 is just plus or minus 1. So it's a factor of 180. So we're going to assume. Because we're going to assume that the mammal people were nice people. And that... Most, if not all, of the roots or factors of 180, both positive and negative, obviously. But we're just going to assume that because that that's that's how pre-calc methods. That's that's how we do things in pre-calc. So we're just going to assume that they didn't do something really weird. We don't need to use. We're just going to assume that they're nice people, and it's a factor of 180. Okay. Okay, so now what? We can use synthetic division, in which case, just go to the end of the video, use synthetic division, and then go to the end of the video and see if you got the answer right. And if you didn't, check your work. Okay? We're not going to use synthetic division, we're actually going to use factor by grouping. Well, how is this factor by grouping? Because usually when you have factor by grouping, you have like something like this. Where 1, 2, 2, 4, right? So, 1, 2 is where one thing is getting multiplied by 2, and 2, 4 is also where one thing is getting multiplied by 2. So there's a pattern there. Here, there's no pattern. It's all over the place. 1, negative 1, negative 25, 11, 144, 180. It's just... What pattern? What pattern? Okay? So how... How do we use... Okay, how do we use factor by grouping with something like this? What we do is that we break terms apart, and then we group them, we group other terms together in order to make multiples of x minus a. So in this case, I'm going to use 2. x minus 2. So how do we do this? We have x to the fifth as a leading term. We want to group this with another term, so that it's a multiple of negative 2. So, to... Since x to the fifth is the highest leading term, we're going to associate it with the highest degree term in our x minus 2 polynomial. So we're going to associate x to the fifth with x. That's, that's what I wanted to say there. x to the fifth is to x. So what do we need to multiply by x to get x to the fifth? That's x to the fourth. So we do the same thing as this minus 2. What's negative 2 times x to the fourth? That's negative 2 x to the fourth. So we just grouped one. Th that's that's a multiple of x minus two. So we just grouped one multiple of x minus two there, and then we have to break this term apart. So we have to break negative x to the fourth apart, so that one of the components is negative two x to the fourth. So what do we add to negative two to get negative one? We add one. So we're going to break up x to the fourth into negative two x to the fourth and x to the fourth. So if that confused you, just pause right there. Take a moment. So w what we did is that we broke up negative x to the fourth and negative two x to the fourth, and x to the fourth, and we did that in order for the negative two x to the fourth to group with the x to the fifth, so that it would be a multiple of x minus two. So that's our kind of our factor by grouping method there. And if you compare this to the synthetic division, a lot of the numbers you get here will be very similar to the numbers you get in synthetic division. That's that can be very interesting, at least in my opinion. So this is basically mathematically the same as synthetic division, but in like it's a lot straightforward because instead of just working with these coefficients and then using this convoluted process, which is kind of like how I think of synthetic division, you're actually just breaking terms apart and then grouping them together, and you can see all of the steps that you're taking in the factoring. And some people will say, this is clearly longer to do because you have to get all of the exponents. But in my opinion, this is, since this is less convoluted and more straightforward, it's actually easier to think out. And I can probably do this problem within 12 minutes, whereas if I use some tag division, I would forget how the process works, and then I would just completely fall apart and never get the problem done and then be so sad. But anyway...
back to this. So now we have x to the fourth. So what? How do we complete the factor, the multiple of x minus two? We add minus two x cubed. So now break up ne negative twenty five x cubed into minus two x cubed and minus twenty three x cubed. So what, negative twenty three times negative two is forty six. So we use forty six x squared, and then break up eleven x squared into forty six x squared and negative fifty seven x squared. And then one one four x, and then break up one four four x into one one four and thirty, and then the minus sixty, and then break one eighty into minus sixty and two forty. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, you can see that we actually had a remainder. So all of this, all of these, all this whole thing, is a multiple of x minus two. But then we had 240 at the end. So that's a remainder. So that means x minus 2 is not a divisor, and 2 is not a root. Okay. So what are we going to try now? Um, let's try 5. Okay. So I'm going to go a bit faster now, now that you know the process. And I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to do this. Let's try. Th this is basically... I actually do this faster because it's, oh, that's not right. I do this faster because it's on paper. Like, in the meets, I, I'm not... Ah, this is what gets me all the time. Ah, there you go. Ah, there you go. It works out. Okay. So, so, 5 is a root. And if you just slow it, maybe you need to pause in between all of my steps. That's basically, like, I do that twice as fast at, at a meet. I'm kind of slow now since it's the morning, but yeah, that's all right. Okay. No. Oh, there you go. Okay, so that was a typo. It's actually supposed to be minus 36x plus 180. So I would do that probably twice as fast as me because I would be in a time rush, maybe. But yeah, I don't know if that was too fast, but that's that's basically how fast you have to think for these problems in order to get them done in a meet. So now... Now that we know that the x5 is a root, we're going to factor out x minus 5. So, if we factor out x minus 5 from this, what do we get? Um, you you can factor out x to the 4th out of both terms here, and then you you would get x minus 5, so that's x to the 4th. Here, um, here, you factor out a 4x cubed, and then you get x to the 5, x minus 5, so that's a 4x cubed right there. Here you say you factor a minus five x squared, and then you would get x minus five. So this would be minus five x squared. Here you factor a negative thirty six x, and then you get minus x to the five. And then here you factor in minus thirty six. Okay. And I think that, that I think that's all right. So, um, in an actual meet, I wouldn't be checking my work so much because I would be going faster. And in an actual meet, from here to here is l f f like thirty seconds because you can see actually see the pattern. All I did was look at the leading coefficients. So x to the fourth, four x cubed, negative five x squared, negative thirty six x, negative thirty six. So all I did was look at the leading coefficient. So from here to here is like fifteen thirty seconds. It's just like synthetic division. How like once you divide it, you just have all of the coefficients right there, and then you can just work with all of them, and then you, you just write down the new polynomial using the numbers you have at the bottom. So it's like just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna guess. Uh, I don't know, negative three. So, um, x to the fourth, and then, so our polynomial, what is our polynomial? x plus three. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm not, I'm just gonna work with x to the fourth. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna leave this out, and then, we're just working with this now. That'll make things simpler. Okay. Three x cubed. <laughs> Break up four, okay. Oh, that, this also works. Okay, so we also know that negative 3 is a root. So we're going to factor an x plus 3. And then hopefully you see the process I'm going through right now. And how it's basically the same thing as I just did before. So now we have a cubic. 
and it, using the rational theorem, we know it has to be a factor of 12. <sighs> I'll try 2. You have to have good guesses. If you have a bad guess, like bad x minus 2, I guess, at the beginning, that will, that's a waste of time. So you have to have, you have, to have high quality guesses. I'm just, I'm gonna guess negative two. Okay. I could, I could try three. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stick with negative two. Okay. Oh, no. this also works. Okay. So as you can see, it takes a lot simpler. Like it's a lot simpler once you get down to the cubics. So quartics and quintics, like they take longer, but cubics is very simple to do this method. So now we factor in x plus two, and then we get x squared minus x minus six. Uh, yeah. Okay. So how do we factor this? X. We have x plus two. How do we factor x squared minus x minus six? You just use you uh, on your own. Factoring um quadratics is very easy in my opinion, so I'm not going to go over that. Oh, is three also a root? I didn't expect that. Okay, so I guess it, it, both three and negative two would have worked. That's just very helpful. Um. Oh, so what are our roots? Our roots are five. We have negative three, and then from down here we have negative two, three, and negative two. No, I'm sorry. Negative two, three, and negative two. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So what is what do we need to find the part of the greatest and least roots? What is the greatest root? Uh, the greatest root is five. And the least root is negative three. So you get negative 15. And that's it. That's our answer. That's actually the right answer. Okay. So we didn't mess up. Okay. So in a, a meet, I know, I think that took a while, but um, in a meet, that would be a lot faster. So I, I don't know if this method confused you. Hopefully, hopefully you understood it all and how I'm just, I'm breaking terms apart and grouping them together. And if you compare this to synthetic division, then the numbers are really similar. I've, I've done synthetic division before, and I use this method to check, and if I don't get the same numbers, then I, I'm very concerned about my... Like, I don't use synth synthetic division to check on a meet, since that would take way too long, but on, like, actual math tests, I would check using I would check using my method. And then, because in the test, you have to use synthetic division, because your teacher makes you, sometimes. Not, all, not always, but... Um, so yeah, I would ch check my synthetic division using this method which can be really helpful because if you mess up with a synthetic division and you find this method more straightforward, then th this helps you, in, at least in my opinion. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. And I, I don't, I don't, I think, um, I will do another area and vol, I will do a video on areas and volumes very soon, like maybe today. I don't think I will come back to this section until for a while. But there are a lot of good problems here. I really said, especially this problem. I got a very similar problem to this wrong on last year. So I will probably do this problem sometime. I don't know, sometime. I won't do it soon though. Like I want to just keep going forward with going to the next round. But there, was, there are good problems here. I definitely suggest you practice them. Oh, this is also a good problem. I really suggest that. Use algebraic division. Or, you can, or, if you're really good, you can try to extend my factor by grouping method, because my factor by grouping method, it, it actually works for polynomials like quadratics and cubics too. You don't have to use just linear polynomials. But it's very complicated, but it, that also helps me in meets. So I, I would do this using my factor by grouping method. If you don't know how to do that, then don't. Just use, just use algebraic division. Algebraic division is just as good. I use that a lot too. But... Yeah, if if you want to try, try to use this method with, um, I'll, actually, I'll do this problem sometime. I'll do it later. There, there are good problems here, though. That, that's what I'm trying to say. There, there are, I think there are a lot of good problems in this section. There are a lot of interesting problems. So, yeah. But they can all, they can all be solved using Peacock methods, which is really cool. So, anyway, um, that's it for this problem. Um, this, yeah, that's it for this video. And I hope you have fun doing math.